So how could it possibly be the male gaze if, if they're not in consideration? That is part of where I start to question how much we should classify things under the male gaze or not the male gaze and the whole inner voyeur idea. Obviously, the most important starting point for this video is what is the male gaze? Basically, it's framing women as sexual objects before all else. It is extremely common in film and other more mainstream media, and it is based off of the reoccurring and oftenness, the um, frequency of this trope that the name was coined and the discussion has been started. How does YouTube fit into this? It's a very interesting crossroad because women, as well as literally the women being portrayed, are in complete control, in most cases, of how they are being filmed and how they are being portrayed. So, obvious instance, I choose what I wear, my camera angles, my script, the editing, the thumbnail, I choose literally every aspect of what you see in this video. So that definitely leaves a lot of room to ignore the male gaze. If I don't care to partake in that image of myself, then in theory, I don't have to. I can not follow the male gaze because I have control. However, it is definitely inspired by mainstream media and in turn, the prevalence of the male gaze. Something that comes to mind is that poem about everything being a male fantasy. This is another aspect of the theory around the male gaze. This poem plays into the idea that every woman, even completely on her own, still acts as her own voyeur. Inside of her is still that idea of the male gaze and that person wanting to sexualize her and put her in that sexual light. And it is definitely in your best interest to play into the male gaze when you are framing your videos. There is definitely pretty privilege on YouTube. The nicer that I look, the more likely you are to want to click on that video, as well as to want to stay on that video. I do things in order to make myself look good, and what I consider good does largely take inspiration from the male gaze, as that is the image that I've been told is beautiful. So I ensure that I have good lighting that brings out my skin tone, that so I'm not washed out. I wear makeup that accentuates my features, and I wear bronzer to make my face look a little bit slimmer. I wear clothing that I consider looking nice, it's not overly baggy, and I like that. And I definitely dress feminine. Oftentimes YouTubers will try to, like I said earlier, emulate the mainstream, which means emulating a form that very much so plays into the male gaze. So in this replication of certain environments or of certain ideas, we wind up playing into it. Yet my intentions aren't to sexualize myself. In fact, I oftentimes strive to do the exact opposite. I don't want to be perceived in that way. I do not frame my videos in order for men to find me attractive. I frame my videos in a way that I find aesthetically pleasing because I enjoy it. <laughs> so does it still play into the male gaze when that is not the creator's intention? Once again, it's very complicated. Like I said before, my idea of beauty is deeply ingrained in this patriarchal idea that plays into the male gaze. Maybe in an ideal world where this wasn't true, my idea of beauty would be different, and therefore I wouldn't be portraying myself in this way. Meaning that this portrayal is, in fact, the male gaze, as that is what I'm taking from. But as we don't exist in that world, and that world does not exist at all, <laughs> There's no way that we can really compare or say outside of hypotheticals, so I don't find that a very useful thought exercise. 
So let's look at some more obvious examples to see where maybe that diversion exists. There is very clearly content that is created to play into the male gaze. I'm thinking the SS Sniper Wolf, the hot tub streams. And while I'm not saying anything about their morals, because I think that, like, there's nothing wrong with it, get that bag, sis. They definitely play into the male gaze in a very clear way that is less clear with content like my own, where yes, I try to be aesthetically pleasing, but is that necessarily the male gaze? And let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum to the hot top streamers, and that is content that is basically targeted towards women. Most fashion and makeup content, as well as like that whole true crime story time niche, is all largely centered around women. So considering male well, males, it sounds like when people call people females, which I know I'm guilty of sometimes too. I, I cringed while editing that that one video. But those videos aren't created for men because men are like literally like this tiny little percentage of that audience. So it's definitely made with that frame of mind that it's created for women as well as just in general the creator probably doesn't want to be perceived in a sexual way because oftentimes that just doesn't turn out great for us. So how could it possibly be the male gaze if, if they're not in consideration? That is part of where I start to question how much we should classify things under the male gaze or not the male gaze and the whole inner voyeur idea. Based off of those classifications of it depends on whether or not men are enjoying this content means that it is or isn't for the male gaze, that's antithetical to the feminist ideas behind the male gaze. The whole point is it's meant to call out the, the problematic nature of the male gaze in order to fix many of the fundamental problems. So then basing whether or not something is on the male gaze and if it's feminist enough based off of whether or not men like it rather than women or women's intentions when creating this content is antithetical to the whole reason the male gaze concept was made in the first place. So we're wrapping around again to something that I stated in the very beginning of this video. It has to do with the creator's intentions. Whatever it is that the creator wishes to encapture, and for whatever reason, is what it is. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> if they are trying to play into the male gaze, then yes, it is encapturing the male gaze. If they are not trying to encapture the male gaze, then they aren't trying to play into the male gaze. An analysis that people have made about Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad versus in Birds of Prey is the clear difference when she was made for the male gaze versus when she was made for the quote-unquote female gaze. In the Under the male gaze, she is clearly posed and dressed in such a way that she can be perceived for male fantasies. However, in the female gaze, she is dressed and the camera angles are presented in such a way for her to be seen as fun and free and focusing on those character aspects before focusing on her as a sexual object. And I think that really shows whether or not YouTube framing is playing into the male gaze, is whether it's being encaptured to primarily show her off for her body, or to primarily show her off for different characteristics. So again, in my instance. My primary purpose with these videos and with my framing is to get, portray an idea, is the content of my words and the ideas that I'm trying to impart on you. Secondarily is keeping your attention. Thirdly is the cute general aesthetic that I have going on. The primary purpose isn't to show off my body or in any way play into that, so it can't be the male gaze, because under the male gaze, then the primary focus would be my body. So there is my somewhat rambly, I told you in the beginning and yet I still somehow made this video like 10 plus minutes long, video about YouTube and the male gaze. 